Welcome back to the show. Find me on Instagram, the underscore poptimist. Also like, subscribe, tell a friend about the show, all of which you can find on Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, Spotify, iHeartMedia, wherever you listen to podcasts at. Millhouse, it's snowy as fuck outside. I know, dude. It, it's shocking. It's honestly shocking how snowy it is for Nashville. We're in the snowpocalypse of Nashville. Everyone's freaking the fuck out. <laughs> dude, I don't think, like, I've not seen anything like this since I've lived here, but I've only lived here two years. Yeah. But it seems, it's pretty wild, especially watching people drive. Oh, yeah. I mean, they drive like it's completely normal. Yeah. They're just flying around corners that are covered in ice, and it's like, are you stupid? Yeah. I've been here for five years now, going on six. In my first year here, there was a pretty big snowstorm that was maybe six or seven inches, something like wow. that. And I was living in East Nashville at the time, across from Stratford, because I lived right over there. Yeah. And the whole city shut down. I had gone to work that morning, and when I went in, maybe like an hour into it, they're like, everybody's got to go home. <laughs> Dang. Because it, it, was, it was bad, because the city can't deal with it. So it was like a normal day, and yeah. everybody went into work, and then it really started coming down, and they said, if you guys don't leave now, you won't be able to get home tonight. Dang. Yeah. That's rough. That's rough. Yeah. I watched, uh, well, I didn't watch it. I seen it after the fact. This lady uh, had ran into a fire hydrant over at, on, uh, at Rivergate, dude. Like Did the, she just slide off the road? Yeah, she slid off the road and ran into the fire hydrant there, dude. They just, it's crazy. Yeah. And, um... Yeah, like I've I've been either getting off work or not been to work the last few days because of the snow. Like like we've been closing down early, but I haven't done shit this week. I mean, I've done stuff. Yeah, but I haven't gone out. I mean, we're supposed to have a recording session this weekend. We don't even know if it's happening at this point. Yeah, because of weather. We hope it is. Yeah, it's a long time coming for this. Yeah, <laughs> it is. But but life is unexpected. You know, this is just. Of course, this is another thing that would fucking happen. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. It's, it, there's been every block in the roadway yeah. since we've tried starting to get this project off the ground. Yeah. Tornado. So. Yep. COVID. Mm -hmm. <laughs> snowstorm. Yep. You know, it's a lot of natural disasters. Yeah a lot really and everybody that like has been involved in the session has got covid and it's blocked doing it and stuff you know yep. it's been a long time um and then of course now we have a snowstorm <laughs> yeah i i personally i feel comfortable driving in it and dealing with it just because i grew up in maine so i'm used to snow i'm used to ice sleet mm -hmm. shitty weather because up there you just have to keep going. It's a fact of life. Yeah. You're expected to continue on. Yeah, so so life in in Maine, when it snows, like it's when it snows here it's a big deal. Yeah. When it snows there, it's obviously not a big deal. It's right? not a big deal, but people still rush to the store if there's a storm coming in and mm -hmm. get supplies and all because you have to. I mean Yeah. It's, it's just how it is. Yeah. But it doesn't nothing shuts down the way it does here i mean we went out driving last night because we needed some vapes <laughs> and uh we drove around madison and target was closed kroger was closed this was eight o'clock at night yeah walmart yeah. was closed mm -hmm. there wasn't many people out it was mostly a ghost town it, it was a ghost town and I'll, I'll honestly say like today like yeah it didn't snow a lot early on in the day or anything it didn't like there wasn't it wasn't that bad out today but it was still pretty much a ghost town yeah people I, were preparing i went into kroger and the line was all the way in the back of the store yeah um and i was like i'm not i'm not dealing with it this. wasn't that bad when i went in there it yeah. was like it was still pretty long like i, I did the self-checkout and it was like to the frozen food section yeah um which was a, a that's a pretty big line yeah that's a big line um but yeah, it, people definitely like buckled down and got like, and and I, I went into work today, and dude, we still had people coming in to get oil changes. It's it's kind of funny. Like I don't know, most most of it was like working people though, like like dudes that were having to work outside. Yeah. Um, but I thought it was funny. Like like we showed up in like the first three hours that we were there, not a soul came in. We had nothing to do. 
you know and we finally got like one customer that came through and it was just they just wanted some air in their tires oh, they didn't shit. even want an oil change yeah <laughs> Yeah, I, the the cold weather is interesting in Nashville in general because when it's cold, people complain about it. They don't want to go out. Yeah. They still do, but when it snows, they freak the fuck out. They don't know what to do. Oh, yeah. Dude, I'd say school's closed down for the rest of the week. I yeah. have no clue, but it probably is. Uh, yeah, I think so, too, because, I mean, it's supposed to be bad uh, Thursday, which is the day this is going to come out, and then Friday, I think it's still supposed to be cold. Yeah. I mean, this, this ice isn't going anywhere till Saturday, really. No. Um, and it's, it's coming down pretty good out there yeah, right now, Yeah, yeah, it's honestly. snowing right now while um, we're recording this. And it, it, like, whenever I was leaving work at 4 today, I was like, it was starting to snow. And by the time I got to Kroger, in that short amount of time, it was already sticking to the road. And I was like, this, this is going to be bad. The thing I saw on Twitter about all the snow was... Uh, like the ice missiles on people's cars. Yeah. Because w- whenever you're driving, it'll fly off behind you and hit who is ever behind you and has been damaging a bunch of windshields. Yeah, I've seen that on uh, Severe Weather or whatever. Yeah. Talking about that today. They've been retweeting it since the snow has started, the ice has started. Because it was the first batch of this was a couple of inches of ice. Yeah, that's that's dangerous. I don't... I try my best whenever I'm driving in snow or something to stay as far away from other vehicles as I can. Because you never know when somebody's just going to like slide into the back of you. Especially Nashville drivers. Yeah, and, and if somebody's trying to go around me, please go around me in the snow and ice. Because I'm, like, I'm not trying to like do that. But yeah, it, it's, it's interesting because Nashville drivers are already bad. So the snow just amplifies it. Yeah. <laughs> Last week I went to a, uh, a pick-apart. Oh, yeah? Yeah, with Tristan, uh, Tristan Norfleet, talented mandolin player and cousin of Josh Norfleet. Yeah, and it was really cool. It was I've never been to one before. Have you ever been to one? Uh, I've been to one one before. Yeah. So it's basically like a giant junkyard for maybe ten or fifteen acres, and it's filled with cars that have been totaled, have been smashed up, and people go in there. You pay two bucks to get in, and you can go and pull parts out. Mm-hmm. But it was so fucking interesting to see because some of the people's cars, they, they don't clean them out. Like when we were going through the cars, we found this journal that was like filled with, uh, with lyrics. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. And it, it, was, it was definitely like a woman's handwriting. And she was writing all about how she liked the guy and he didn't like her back. And Damn. she was playing games and being a douchebag and shit like that. Huh. But it was interesting to see a snapshot of someone's life because in like American culture... Your car is almost, it's uh, almost like your center of gravity. Yeah, definitely. Because you're going to and from places living your life yeah. between your house where you make money. Yeah. I mean, for me, it's how I make money. Yeah. So it, it definitely is a big part of, of you and can affect your life greatly if it breaks down or you don't have one. Yeah. You know, so like having a vehicle is like, it's essential. You got, you yeah, know, you got especially, to, especially it, here. That is cool. Cause it's, it's almost like it is a part of your personality in a, in a way too. I think, uh, for of some, course you do for some people it is. Um, I got a pickup truck, <laughs> but yeah, that, that's cool that you found that. Well, was it, was there like a lot of lyrics in it or was it just like a few pages? It was just a few pages. It looks like this person was pretty inconsistent with what they were trying to do at least at this at this point they were trying though i give them props for that like they had were the lyrics good no not really okay um but who am i to judge how am i to really know maybe they're genius with a a vocal melody or if they're wrapped or something yeah but it was cool to see just because there was all of these cars all kinds of cars just smashed to shit in horrible shape you know airbags deployed all shit like that yeah I have, a, I have a bunch of buddies that I work with that, that go to them often to get parts for their cars. That they've it's built. a whole culture, dude. Yeah, it is. Like the That's one thing I'll say about where I work is, like, I've learned a lot about that, like, car culture, you know, and, like, working on vehicles, like, the type of people that, you know, what they do for fun. Yeah. Their idea of fun is not my idea of fun. <laughs> um, like, I like working on vehicles to a certain extent, but they take it on another level, you know. You like drinking almond milk. Yeah. There's a difference. Yeah. Did I hurt your feelings, Millhouse? No. 
I can tell. I can tell your body is contorting right now. No, I like working on vehicles. It's just not something that I, I want to do every day, you know? I like to learn about it. It's good to know. Not a lot of people know how to change their own oil. No. There's a lot. Um, so it's like, it's cool to learn that. And it's cool to see that part of people. My dad tried to teach me all that shit. Tried to teach me. I mean, I could probably do it. Because he taught me how to do a bunch of stuff. We replaced the brakes on my car before. We did all sorts of shit. And... I don't know. I was just never good at that shit. I'm not good at any of that shit. I always wanted to play music and write yeah, songs and like, s- smoke weed and <laughs> shit like that. I learned how to like change oil young, and I know how to change brake pads and brake hoses and all that like little essential stuff. I just can't replace your transmission. I can't take yeah, apart I, an engine and put it back together like these people like that's, to do. That's a skill. That's I mean, it, it is a skill. It's like uh, Phil Bryan. He's a genius when it comes to that shit. Yeah. He knows how to do it, but... Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm cool with just learning the essentials of, of car maintenance and then not really going past that. <laughs> if you're looking for a Mike Trout rookie, I can, I can advise you on how to get one, but I can't tell you how to change your oil. We all have skills in life, Millhouse. Yes, we do. So what have you been doing this week during the snowpocalypse? I've been working a lot. I mean... Really, other than that, I've just been trying to write more and trying to, like, go into that more. And um, one thing that I've kind of, like, been doing a lot is, like, self-improvement as far as, like, mental health of, like, meditating and stuff. Uh Uh-huh. And just kind of, like, trying to work that out. So you've been meditating a lot this week? Yeah. What do you do? Do you do it with guided meditation or without? It depends, man. Um... I do I do a lot of guided meditations, uh, if I, especially if I'm going to sleep. But if I'm just, like, meditating in the day, sometimes I'll just take, like, a minute. Like, no phone, no nothing, nothing to distract me, and just uh, sit there in, in silence. And that kind of, like, helps me just, like, clear my head for a little bit. I like it because after I get out of it, I always find my most productive songwriting yeah. times are whenever I sit down to meditate. I don't make any plans to do anything else after. And I'm just recharged. My mind and my spirit are clear and I'm ready to sit down and kind of do some work. Yeah, it's a, it's a good way to clear your head. And if, if you've never done it before, I highly recommend just like taking 10, you could do 10, 15 minutes of just absolute silence. You know, no phone, no, nothing. Just sit there and um, just try to clear your head. And just breathe. The most effective meditation I think I do is when I go between 35 and 45 minutes Mm -hmm. because I can really go off into a space then yeah or I'm still having thoughts but I'm not I'm like in in between unconscious and conscious Mm -hmm. yeah I would say like the longest ones I've done is like 30 minutes I don't really go much past that I don't think my ADD can handle it (laughs) but yeah um but yeah, you get in that zone. For me, it's like right around like twenty minutes. You get in that zone of of like clarity. Cl- yeah, cl- clarity definitely. And I, I, when I meditate, like I'll zone out or I'll zone in on something specific for a little bit. Sometimes it's, not, it's just not possible for me to clear my head like that. Yeah, I'll zone in on something specific and I'll think about it. Like what? Something you're bothered by? Either something I'm bothered by or something that I'm doing lately that's just not working out. I do that too, but when I do it, I try to um, almost just focus on that yeah. and then let that thought go. Yeah. And not think, not think of anything. Yeah. For me, it's almost like I'm working out what's wrong in that time. Like, I'm, I'm taking a step back from everything that I'm doing, and I'm just looking at it for what it is. Yeah. And, it, yeah, like, it helps me think about either that problem less or, like, deal with that at the time. But, like, yeah, I'll, I'll zone in on something specific like that, and it helps. Have you done yoga before? I've not done yoga before. Yoga's the shit, dude. You like yoga? Yeah. I like it a lot. I've been doing it the past couple of days, getting a routine back with it. 
I haven't had anything else to do. I've just been yeah. home. You know what I mean? I also was up to like 4 a.m. <laughs> the Gosh. Not last night. I actually went to bed at a decent hour. But I hate it when I'm up that late, dude. Yeah. It it makes you feel bad the next day. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Especially when I'm waking up at 11 or noon or some shit. Because that's not my... And then My it, personality. it throws you off the rest of the day and you feel weird. You know what I'm saying? It feels like the whole day is in slow motion. Like I've stayed up tons of nights like that. And the next day you just always feel like either unproductive or just, you know, in a pissy mood. Yeah. You know? I used to stay up like, like that all the time, especially when I first moved to Nashville. I'd stay up till 5 a.m. and then go to work at 8 a.m. That's know? fucked, dude. And I can't do that. I anymore. lived like that at, at our last roommate's house. Yeah, that's how I lived every day. Um, and then finally, I just, you know, was able to not do that anymore. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I was uh, like, uh, I was uh, definitely staying up way too late. Uh, it was like an insomnia type thing. When I noticed I was doing it, that's when I was like, I need to to do yoga to balance this out because it's something that's good for me. Yeah. And plus, dude, I love the sound of my joints snapping and popping. It's the greatest feeling in the world, bro. I'm 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 not flexible at all. I don't think that's I why do you got to do yoga, bro. I know, but dude, I know it's gonna hurt. Like, <laughs> it doesn't it doesn't really hurt. It's just uncomfortable. Yeah, it's very uncomfortable when you're doing it. When you're there's this one move where you're on your hands and knees and you put one arm out in front and one arm behind. Yeah. And you keep your head down and you try and stretch them both out and like pull them outside of your body. Yeah. And uh, that is always the move that I struggle the most on. I might try it. I, I would, I wish I was a little bit more flexible. Um, it's uh, the thing that I use is Diamond Dallas Page, mm-hmm. a DDPY, Diamond Dallas Page Yoga. It's really good. Zach does it too. Does he it? likes it as well. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Diamond went on a. Uh, Joe Rogan. Oh, cool. And also, speaking of Dallas, this week we posted the interview with Dallas Sonye on Man of Science, Man of Faith, which is our first Man of Science, Man of Faith interview. And we talked all about the Run, Hide, Fight movie. We talked about his relationship with director S. Craig Zoller, who did Bones, Tomahawk, uh, Brawl in Cell Block 99, and Dragged Across Concrete. And he, he broke some news on the podcast but it was before uh, we we were able to put it up because we have like a release scheduled. Yeah. And he talked about the Gina Carano thing. So Gina Carano was fired from The Mandalorian. She plays Cara Dune on the show due to her conservative, air quote, views. Um, so that was kind of interesting to get him to break it down and basically say that he was on the phone with Gina's people to try and get her in a Daily Wire movie, which it was announced that she was going to produce and star in one. Wow. That's awesome. I, I thought that that interview was, was really good. It, yeah. It might, be, it might be my favorite episode of Man of Science. Yeah. It's, and, it's up there. It I mean, it's, it's good just because he, he talks a lot about taking a gamble on someone because yeah. he took a gamble on S. Craig Zoller. It was the first movie he was ever going to direct and he took out like a fucking mortgage on his house and all this shit to be able to do it. Yeah. It was very inspiring to hear him talk yeah. about that. Um, just about how he was kind of like the underdog with it all. And he, he came out. Well, yeah, because the, the movie was super successful bone Tomahawk. Um, and they made all their money back and more cause it only had a $2 million budget. Yeah. And I've been listening to interviews as well with S. Craig Zoller and uh, hear him talk about it. And he was saying that he wasn't going to direct movies unless he had final cut and complete control over the project. Because he said he had other creative outlets, which I thought was interesting. Because he's a a musician and a novelist as well. He's written a couple of books. There's one Western book I've heard is really good called Congregation of Jackals. So I want to read that. Check it out. Nice. Um... Yeah, I thought that was a great episode. I'll have to have to check out his books. Yeah. I've been trying to get into reading a lot more lately. Um, I'll definitely check it out. What have you been wanting to read lately? Um, I still got to re- read Fight Club. I never did finish that. I read um, The Old Man in the Sea, though. That was pretty good. What did you learn from it? 
Um, what did I learn from it? I learned that you might not always catch the fish, but the, um, what am I trying to say? At the end when he's catching the big, the big one Mm -hmm. and, and, um, I don't really know what I learned from it. I honestly didn't get much from it. I read it and just took what it was, you know. On that note, I'm going to call Gabby right now and have her talk about the new single that they have released from the Weird Sisters. Let's see if she picks up. I told her I told her to be ready, so. Hello. What up, Gabby? You're on the air. How's it going? I'm good. I'm here with uh, my boy, Isaac. Nice. So, the, what's up, Isaac? How are you, buddy? Oh, doing spectacular, dude, on this snowy afternoon. Dude, isn't this great? It's wonderful, dude. I can't get enough, dude. I'm in love. I'm in love, ladies and gentlemen. This is our first winter wonderland together in Nashville. It's been uh, woefully snowless up until this year. Yeah, it's usually only flurries and people still run to the store, but now everyone's freaking the fuck out because the news is like, you're all going to die. Yeah, well, the news is always you're all going to die. Oh, so yeah. Let's, uh, let's be honest. I'd rather freeze to death. I'd rather freeze to death, too. Well, what's the other choice? <laughs> Just freeze to death. Okay, so freeze to death, freeze to death. Cool. Yeah. So you guys got a new single. What's it called? It's called Going Down, and uh, we did not write it. We covered it. Um, it was originally put out by... Uh, was made famous by Freddie King. He's a blues legend. Yeah, Freddie King's fucking sick. And he was the... That was the first version of the song I heard. I know Jeff Beck's played it. Um, but it was written originally by Don Nix, which we had to figure out in order to like get the license to to go, go ahead and actually do a cover tune. So yeah, yeah, we, it just came out a couple weeks ago, and yeah, we're very excited and happy about it. Our friend Ben McLeod, um, he engineered and mixed the whole thing, and we did it over the summer. It was a lot of fun. Nice. Where'd you guys record it at? In our house, in our basement. Nice. The Greycroft. The Greycroft Manor. Yes, Greycroft Manor. <laughs> and uh, going down is uh, something that's been in your guys' live set now for a little while. Yeah, it was actually on our first set list that we, uh, that we ever had um, back in January 2017. And where can people find the single at? We're... Uh, where is it located? Uh, well, wherever you listen to music. It's on uh, YouTube, on our YouTube channel. Uh, it's on Spotify, Apple Music, Tidal, uh, everywhere. Rock and roll. What else you guys been up to lately? You got any plans for any new music? Oh, yeah, man. We've been recording a whole bunch. And then also we're kind of working on some music videos right now, too. That's kind of what we're working on, like, in this moment, kind of getting a music video for this new song um, that we we're about to put out. Uh, this is going to be called Lost in the Chronic, and we're in the process of turning the basement into uh, a spaceship right now. Lost in the Chronic? That's what it's called? That's what it's called, dude. Fuck yeah. All right. Is this a, is this a Poptimist exclusive right now? Yes. Fuck yeah. Okay, it's well... It is. I will give you guys a, uh, a call back later. Thank you so much. Um, I will talk to you soon. Thanks for having us. Of course. I will. He's right here. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Okay, here's Going Down by the Weird Sisters.
And we are back. In black. <laughs> I mean, I'm almost wearing all black, but... And blue. <laughs> and a little bit of blue. Um, news. What do we got going on, Millhouse? So, Rush Limbaugh, conservative talk radio pioneer, dead at 70. Died of lung cancer down in Florida. Rip. He's been, uh, been sick for a long time. Trump awarded him the Presidential Medal of Freedom. People freaked the fuck out when that happened. But, I mean, overall, despite whatever you think about Rush's views, he is a legendary broadcaster, and he really popularized talk radio. Mm -hmm. I'd never really heard of him, honestly. I don't know how I'd skip that one. I've heard of, like, Tucker Carlson or, you know, and, and all those People like Ben Shapiro and all these conservative talk show hosts, but I'd never heard of Rush Limbaugh. Mm-hmm. I'd heard his name, but I'd never like listened to him before. Uh, have you listened to him like a lot? Or I've listened to him before. I've never, I've never been the biggest Rush fan just because there was stuff I didn't really agree with him on. But he always had interesting ideas and ex- expressed himself well, and was just a great entertainer. Kind of in the similar way that Alex Jones is. He really d- does like the theater of the mind thing. Yeah. So so he definitely acts with it too. Like Oh yeah. Yeah. He play like, he plays into it and he knows that it pisses people off. So <laughs> uh side story about Rush Limbaugh. Uh Zach Lehman, the Man of Science Man of Faith co host, loved Rush Limbaugh in high school. <laughs> loved him. Because Rush was famous, one of the things he was famous for was calling uh, feminist feminazis. So Zach was calling everybody a feminazi in high school. <laughs> and we were in a super liberal college town. So people were outraged whenever he was like, I'm a Rush Limbaugh fan. <laughs> that seems about like Zach going against the grain. <laughs> he would go home every single day and he would listen to Rush and then he would watch Glenn Beck. He loved Glenn Beck Glenn as Beck. well. Yeah, nice. That's funny. Yeah. Well, what's what's pretty screwed up about his death is just seeing all the like the very aggressive more, people. Yeah, aggressive, and it's there was uh, rest and piss was trending on Twitter, and it was because of him. It's morbid, you know. Like that's or maybe not morbid is the right word, but it's I don't know. It's he somebody died, you know. Yeah. Like that sucks, no matter what. But in today's world, though, people think, oh, yeah, this is, he made Hitler possible. Yeah, like that's, that's. He was a fucking broadcaster, you know yeah. what I mean? And he was yeah. talking about conservative shit on air, but at the end of the day, who really gives a fuck? You yeah, know? he was podcasting before podcasting was. Kind of, yeah. yeah. I mean, in a way, he was. Like, that's what talk shows are. You yeah. Know? They're basically just podcasts before they existed, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, I think it's uh, it's definitely like disrespectful to be like rest in piss, you know, yeah. or whatever. It it sucks, but we will move on to the next article. Hang on one second. Okay. This moment of silence is brought to you by the public library. Go ahead, Mel. <laughs> <laughs> Texas grid was minutes from failing. Lawmakers say. So the Texas in Texas. There's been over 2.4 million outages as of Wednesday evening due to the winter storm in Texas. Yeah. That's crazy, right? It is crazy. I mean, uh, this is a giant storm that's affecting the whole country that we're dealing with right now. Yeah. I didn't think it was going to be that big. It's big. Dude, I didn't even, like, go to the store to prep or anything, really, like... I was just like, eh, it's Nashville. We're probably not going to get snow. And then, like, I see about, like, Texas and stuff. Whenever people freak out about snow flurries, this is what they're worried about. Yeah. They're worried about this happening, what's happening right fucking now. Yeah. And I was completely like, it's not going to happen. Yeah. And then it happens. <laughs> I'm always anticipating. I'm like, bring it on. I want it to happen. Yeah. The uh, the outages, they spread pretty far in Texas. Um, it really sucks. Um, I think, like... They're going to get, like, federal funding and stuff to, like, help get... I saw that. I saw people giving Texas shit, too, and making fun of them. And it's like, do you realize people who aren't conservative also live in Texas? Yeah, there's tons of... There's all kinds of people in Texas. Yeah. Not just conservatives. Not just conservative, gun-owning, Bible-thumping. I mean, that's a part of Texas, but... Yeah. And it's a part of here, too. There's a lot of... There's a lot of Mexican people there. There's all sorts of people there. Just like normal working people that are trying to live their lives yeah. and their power grid is fucking going down. Yeah. 
they don't have power, you know, like, and it's cold out. So I saw a story about, um, the fucking windmills mm-hmm. the, they Wind were talking turbines. about that that were used to, to power and they froze because it got so cold yeah i'd seen a picture of the um oh, I, I don't know i forgot what they're called the um the sun the power grid the that are solar by. panels solar panels solar panels uh with snow covering covering them yeah uh that's that's crazy yeah it's um it's wild that i wonder how long it's been since texas has had a storm like this before probably a while it's probably been a hot minute yeah you know probably since like the 90s or something um but yeah that that is wild for sure you want to move on to the next article yeah okay fbi u.s attorney investigating cuomo's handling of ny nursing homes so governor cuomo is under investigation right now basically for the whole thing that happened with the nursing homes where they pumped COVID patients into the nursing homes. At least that's alleged of what happened. Really? And one of the reasons that supposedly everything, the numbers spiked in New York was because of that. And with the way that things were set up for COVID, you were able to get federal funding. So that's why he's under investigation to see if he was trying to get the federal money in order from all these COVID deaths or either who knows what he was actually trying to do. Do you think he was trying to get the money? Uh, so here's the thing with anything government related. I always want to assume that they're evil, but they're also very stupid. So it could have been totally unintentional. Yeah. He, he might not have been doing that intentionally at all. And it just came back to bite him. Yeah. It might've just been a stupid move that he did, which either way, there should be some kind of consequence for that because people fucking died. Yeah. 8,711 deaths yeah. in the nursing homes. That's, that's a, lot, that's of a lot of fucking people. That's dude. a lot of people for that to be a mistake. So yeah. I don't know. There, something definitely seems sketchy about that. Uh, yeah, who knows? I mean, it, it could be any number of fucking things. Check out the show. Next week, we will have a new episode of Man of Science, Man of Faith. We're doing Nebraska by Bruce Springsteen, so go check that out. And also, again, be sure to like, subscribe, rate, tell a friend uh, about the Poptimist because it wouldn't be possible without people listening. This podcast is produced to you by Taylor Miller.